Hi and welcome to this Blueberry Markets video update with me John Kibler, Head Currency Analyst. In this video I'm going to be taking you through the week ahead analysis video. I'm going to highlight the news for the week and some charts to watch. So first of all, starting off with some news, had some news over the weekend in Australia. There were elections and the Labour Party uh, came out with the win there, uh, which could add a little bit of volatility to the Australian dollar going into the early stages of this week. Uh, in other news, we have RBNZ uh, forecasted rate hike of 50 basis points. Um, so it could be a little bit of a boost to the Kiwi there. Although usually when things are forecasted in, we oft often see an opposite effect. But could be a bit of positive going into this week uh, and the reason for that could be also down to the US Federal Reserve Chairman Powell speaking. Now uh, recently uh, Federal Reserve Chairman Powell has spoken about the fact that the FOMC um, really are stuck in terms of they have uh, no other option than to hike interest rates if inflation continues to rise aggressively they will have to continue to uh, reflect that and match that and hike rates aggressively and they've talked about 50 basis points jump going into June and potentially one further after that as well um, which is quite aggressive by the Federal Reserve standards at the moment and uh, what we've seen is a reflection of that in the stock markets and the stock markets have continued to fall potentially because of this uh, hawkish Federal Reserve at the moment. If however inflation does start to come down and uh, there is evidence of that doing so that could put less pressure on the Federal Reserve to hike rates so aggressively it could add a little bit of positivity to the stock markets. Um, but in the medium term stock markets downside is looking a little bit more um, likely at the minute but we'll go take a look at that towards the end of the video so stick around for that um, going on to the strength meter not real any big changes um, this week uh, we still have the US dollar as the strongest currency in a reversal zone so we could see some weakness, which we saw towards the end of last week, um, continue to the early stages of this week. Um, so that's something to know, uh, as well as Aussie is now in that sort of minus five area um, in that reversal zone now. So potentially looking for some reversals to that if, like I said, we get a bit of a positive bounce from the recent elections. So going on to Aussie US dollar, what I've done in this video is I'm highlighting weekly market profiles or volume profiles to you. Um, just to show you where some key levels may be going into this week and you can see that last week's data shows us that price created a point of control around about the 0 0.7020 area um, which you can see the market has been bouncing from recently and that above it there is a also an untested level of point of control which I think the market could head towards going into this week so the 7100 area or the 7093 hosts this untested point of control so what I'm expecting from the Australian US dollar price in early session into this week is to push towards this untested point of control now if price trades above it comes back retest it we could see continuation to the upside lots of low volume up here that has been untested tested so the price could head towards these highs if we did see a significant turnaround in the US dollar if however price starts to uh, push towards this reject back through it retest it on the downside um, I think that that could be a little bit negativity for Aussie US dollar and we could see price push a little bit lower again got some low volume down here that's been tested as well Moving on to dollar yen, so we looked at dollar yen's volume profiles in a video last week. If you want to go and check that out, um, you can do. But essentially, we talked about this low volume pocket in here being a little bit of a um, sticking point for the dollar yen price, and that if price was to reject it um, and break below the value area low, which was this candle in here, then we would likely see some further downside towards these lows through there, uh, which is exactly what happened. The price came and retested the value area low dropped towards these lows and actually even dropped a little bit lower to this uh, single print area around about 127 and prices seem to recover from that since and that could be due to the recent little stock market rebound um, so it's going to be interesting this week whether we stick with the stock market rebound or whether price comes back now you can see here there's a, a value area low um, just in here 
And if price was to trade back through this, retest it on this side, I think we'd actually see price move back towards last week's point of control around about 129.40. Um, so again, that's going to kind of depend on what happens in the stock markets. Um, if we kind of stay below this 127.97 area, then we could see price come back down to these lows through here. US 10-year yields were fairly negative last week as well, and so were the stock markets. So that's what's kind of making me think that dollar yen is more likely to move to the downside. However, we know in the markets that we can get often get kind of short-term rebounds. And uh, if that was to happen and price was to break back into last week's value area low, I think that we trade back to the other side of value there. Gold is on our watch list as well. If the dollar does continue to fall, there could be some upside to gold. Last week's data shows that there's a point of control around about 1816, which would be a nice area to look for uh, potential long positions from. Alternatively, we have an untested point of control from the week prior around about 1853.76. If price was to climb above this, we could see price continue to the upside there. We did talk about earlier in the week that price was finding some um, support at the sort of current value area high, which uh, was would offer long opportunities as well, which could have been taken in the short term here. But looking at this profile now, I'd suggest maybe 1816 would give you a better risk reward opportunity to the upside. Finally, then the S&P 500, we know the S&P has been on a decline for some time now. Um, I think the stock market overall is down around about 18, 19% um, this year so far. So there's been quite a heavy um, downside reversal to the stock markets. Um, so naturally, you want to look for a potential rebound to that uh, in the short term. Midterm, we could see some further downside, and I think looking at the profile here, we can see that there's a lot of low volume down through here that price has kind of re rejected so far. We're at the point of control, so if we can trade above that, maybe we'll see an increase back towards this sort of low volumed area through here. Uh, alternatively, you've got a week prior's point of control and last week's value area high in a very similar area. Um, so around about 4025, that could be the next rejection area for the S&P 500 on a weekly profile. So keep an eye on the S&P. Um, it's going to be, I think, where you want to be focusing some attention this week. Even this kind of low volume pocket through here um, could be somewhere to focus a bit of attention because if price was to trade above it, uh, you know, I think we could see you know, the value area high being tested quite quickly and then maybe even potentially this high volume node around about 4075s um, as a short-term rebound to the recent downside that we've seen if price remains capped below this low volume let's say price just kind of struggles to really break through and we see another move, de move down that's going to support the um, haven currencies like the dollar and the yen um, but further upside could see the yen kind of just weaken a little bit slight, uh, slightly going into this week. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope that made sense as well. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did leave this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel to see some more of our Forex training content. And I'll speak to you in the next video.